you how to make this sword from Breath of the Wild. Hey guys, so the first step is to cut out the sword, um, I'm sorry that I can't show you guys, but it got lost somewhere, so um, just use a template or a reference photo and then cut it out. Okay guys, so just trying to ignore my um, dog Casey, but, so I got my sword here, um, as you can see I drew like a ton of lines, but um, eventually I left it up to about an inch right here, but um, yeah, this part is a little messed up, so I'm gonna have to wing it. Reason being is because I kind of already started to sand this part down, so kind of you know make move. So I'm gonna have to you know. So I got I just got this sanded today. Oh, um, I have some 80 grit sandpaper right here. I've got a bag to fill it up in. It's a plug-in. So I got all my safety equipment. Got my gloves and all that. I'm about to clamp the sword down. I actually I don't think I need to clamp it down, but yeah, I don't think I need to clamp it down. But you know, I'll see what happens. I'll work with it. So I'll put uh, my clamps over here for now. So make sure to have your safety glasses and gloves on at the very least when you're working with this kind of stuff. And also here's the ruler. I was just using a regular ruler. You can anything you want to measure it out. So yeah, just um, make sure you do it, you're um, staying safe, you have all the equipment, you're outside in a ventilated area so you don't um, just breathe in dust. Might even be better if you have a mask, but I'll be fine, I'm in an open space so I won't be breathing that many dust particles. But most importantly, wear a mask, so, I mean, wear some glasses, so you don't get any in your eye. Because sometimes if you get...
Yep. Okay, guys. So I've sanded it down. It's a lot rounder now. Sorry, the table walked a little bit, and you weren't able to get everything. So as you can see, I rounded. Um, oh, sorry. I rounded everything out. Looks a lot better. Feels a lot better. So now I'm gonna get to um, beveling the blade. So most of you guys probably won't agree with me with how I'm gonna do this, but so let me. Right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure and get my um, lines right. So I'm not gonna film me doing it. Well, I might film me drawing the lines, but I don't think I'm gonna film me saying because that's gonna be too long of a process. But I think for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off. Basically, just um, draw your lines, whatever bevels you want, and then like. My original plan was to like follow, like go in about like an inch, not an inch, um, a centimeter, and um, just do it like that and then bevel everything that's outside the little shape I made. But because I did this, I had to change, I had to change it. So just try and, um, you know, do whatever you can. If you don't rush and stuff, you probably won't um, make the same mistake. But then again, this is like the first sword um, I'm doing all this on, so might be a couple mistakes. But, you know, just do your best. So I'm going to take these off and quickly um, draw and then sand it. And then we'll come back um, after I've done that. Uh, my camera is about to die, so I'm going to make this as quick as possible. And I'll see you guys when we come back. Okay, guys, so I'm back. Ignore the background noise. So, as you can see, um, it's not perfect, but I have been doing the bevels. There's a clear bevel right there. You know, it's beveled on both sides. So, I'm going to uh, show you how I did it. So, for this, you're going to need um, a clamp um, and a block so you don't damage your wood. A hammer or a really, really large mallet. I'm using a hammer. I don't have a mallet. A pencil, which is optional. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to be using it, but maybe. Definitely a requirement is, uh, yeah. A definite requirement is the coping saw, or just like any mini saw you have that you can control easily. And a screwdriver or a chisel. I only have this, but it's been working good so far, so, you know. Like, it's kind of dull, but I don't think I need to sharpen it. It's fine. So yeah, so let me um, show you how I'm going to be doing this. So first of all, you got to clamp it, and um, no, okay. so I'm going to clamp it, and then um, I'll show you how I did it. Okay guys, so this part you is not required that you um, clamp it down, at least the first part. I'm going to be cutting it, oh, oh sorry, I'm going to be cutting it, the reason why I'm not using it is because um, I did this one. Um, by having it like over here, but that's not gonna work for the entire thing, so I decided on um, the entire sword, so I decided just to cut it by, um, you know, just by cutting it. So just um, wear your gloves, be careful. Okay, so basically what you want to do here, grab your hammer, grab your um, screwdriver, chisel, actually, I don't need this on, this, this isn't wood dust, this is just wood chunk. You want to drive into the little crack you made, well, maybe because this is like hovering off the ground, one sec, let me see if I can try to find some of the shovel this. Is that enough? No, I need like two. Is 
There we go. That should help it a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't leave too many indentions on my wood, but it should be fine. Really what you got. Okay, so then, once you drop it in, one, go like that, and then it'll pop off. You know? Let's go. Work it with the screwdriver, and boom. Just want to keep repeating that. Also, you can just go in like this on the previous one you did. Pop it off. Simple as that. And just keep doing that until, um, you know, you get, uh, and then until it looks good, looks like the rest of them, and then just keep continuing it. We'll come back, um, after, um, I, we'll come back after I do all the rest of them. Hey guys, it's EF, so, I got some real wood filler. There's another one could, like, rub off, so, I got some wood filler. Came with some hardness. Hey guys, so just a real quick reminder, um, wear a mask because the stuff just stink. I don't want you guys getting hurt or anything. I, I don't want you guys, um, you know, I just put on the last coat. I've done a total of three coats on this thing and um, so far it's looking good. I'm going to sand it in about like a couple hours so um, we'll return when I do that. Anyways, see you guys later. Okay guys, so it's been like roughly 24 hours feels dry it's been way over the time so as you can see it doesn't look too pretty but what takes some um, 100 I mean yeah one 100 grit sandpaper and sand it down this is from the old um, stuff so it's it's mostly still good it's probably finer now so I'm gonna just go in an angle just sand this stuff down Um, all the sand I tried doing earlier, it's like really, it's a lower grit, so don't want to use this, I'm just going to rip it off. Got to find a way to rip it off, though. Much so I can't wear them. Um, dang, it. Sorry, I still have the spatulas and stuff out here. I'm um, sledding, but I'd rather not get hit in the face today by some degree, so, you know, I got to wear something. Got my clamp down, nice and firm. Just go right along the edges and smooth it out. Okay, so guys, cut out, but yeah, it's it's pretty smooth. So I'm gonna seal it in. Well, it's great paint out here, and I'm gonna seal it, and then tomorrow we'll we can paint it. But yeah, that feels really nice. Okay, guys. Hey guys, so um, finally time to start painting. So the first thing I got is I gotta seal this in. So um, I'm using this. It's just clear cover just to put this is to protect all of the how do I say this oh yeah this is to protect all the wood filler from all the um you know from whatever scrapes and stuff so it doesn't exactly come out so okay guys we're back so this time I got some primer it's also a filler primer that's gonna help fill in some of the Spots I didn't exactly get so well, so this is what it's called. Sorry if it's not picking up so well, but yeah. 
You want to zoom in on the sword? Okay, guys, so we're back. So, um, yeah. Oh, I got a cardboard box finally. So, um, I have some silver metallic spray paint right here. Let me, um, show you. This is what it is. 280725 bright metallic silver. That's what I'm using for the blade. Okay, guys, so I gotta hurry up today. There's like a couple tornado warnings and stuff, but anyway, so, um, <clears throat> one layer is about all I needed for the um, blade. So, I put some bags around it so it doesn't get any of this paint on it. So, I got um, this paint. Let's see if it shows up. If you can't read it, it says 7270 Gold Rush Metallic. I wanted something that's kind of a little wear down. So I don't have to do so much weathering. So yeah, I thought this was a good color. Okay guys, so I've been doing going at this for a while, but if you see that, that looks a lot like rust. So what I'm gonna end up doing is painting that with the sword. So what I recommend is mixing yourself up uh uh, like a reddish brown, I mean a reddish purple, a uh, light brown, a dark brown, and like uh, just mix black and yellow until you get something close to this. I'm gonna actually think add a little bit more red to the purple. And then just paint your blade. This is where you can really get creative with this kind of stuff. So I like, my workplace, I've been trying to figure this out for a little bit, but um, so I'm going to be using this brush. This is like a chip brush, kind of, so it's going to help create that effect a little better. So I'm going to add a little bit of red to it. And I'm going to be washing them in between. I'm um, going to actually have a brush I'm going to be using for mixing. Uh, yeah, this brush. So I'm going to add a little bit more red to this. Oh, that's a little too much. Oh, let's see how it looks. But yeah, just experiment when you're doing this kind of stuff. Okay, guys, after a couple of hours, we got a good rust effect. I painted a couple other spots. So, um, you, you probably, you might not be able to pick this up on camera, but I put like a scratch right here. I like just made a bunch of little scratches and little indentions with my X-Acto knife. Just, you know, going randomly, just trying to create some sharp things. And now around those, I'm going to add some rust. So, for this one, for these little things, since um, they're not as big as the blade, Instead of using this big thing, I'm going to be using the smaller brush. Okay guys, so next we're going to wrap the handle in the blue, so... I didn't have any leather or anything, so I went to the store and I got this, um, oh, I'm trying to find the end of it, there's a lot of it here, and I had to, look at this, this, um, clearish blue stuff, but when you, like, bunch it together, you know, it becomes, like, a strong blue, the same blue I need, so what I'm gonna do, I got some contact cement, I'm gonna put a little right here, and then I'm just gonna, Keep it wound tight, just wrap it so that I can have that kind of string effect. Kind of makes it look a little more authentic. Okay guys, so I couldn't film the entire thing, but basically I wrapped it. Right now, um, I'm waiting for this stuff to dry, so you have to wait for the cement to dry before you can use it. So, I'm just going to wait a minute while I'm holding this, I'm still holding it pretty tight. I just wrapped it around like this, I think it um, gives it a cool effect. Feels like a nice grip. Okay, so I'm going to, I guess... 
I think I put it. Okay, after a while, I finally got the stick. This, that I guess it finally dried correctly or something. So, I'll let that dry. And this is pretty much it. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to make um, this Breath of the Wild sword. It's like not anything specific. It's just a sword, like from the promotional art that I decided to make. I don't think it actually made it into the real game, but yeah, as you can see, we got all the rust effects on here. You know, I think it came out great. Got the wrap. Got this little um, thing. So I didn't exactly cover this in the video, but I kind of just dremeled this out with um, a couple different tools. Um, I didn't like film it. Sorry about that, but yeah, just dremel it out, and then you know you'll get the shape. Um, I recommend using one of those like things that are kind of like shaped like a triangle, like a cone you know, it like starts narrow and then gets wider. Um that helped me create this um effect where it gets deeper like this. And um really um helped out. I didn't really need a sand at all um on the inside of this. It was already smooth, so I recommend using one of those pieces and a Dremel. Yeah, that's it guys. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um I hope you guys try this. If you do, um Please send me some pictures. I know a lot of you guys are probably better at woodworking than I am, so you probably would be able to create something like 50 times better than what I did, but, you know, I think it came out good. So, um, this is going to be the sword I'm going to be taking to Comic-Con. Next episode, we're going to be creating the Sheikah Slate. Um, got to get started on that. And then we're going to try and make us a shield and then a costume. All these are going to be videos dedicated to Breath of the Wild and Comic-Con coming up here soon. So yeah, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this, enjoyed this video once again. And this is ZF Productions, signing out.